Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching this. This is the training video for the front desk volunteers for the Adoption and Education Center. So when you volunteer at the front desk, you are the first impression of JHS. You're the first person that people walk in and see. So volunteering at the front desk is a very important role. We allow volunteers who can demonstrate premier customer service and are able to appropriately represent the organization to volunteer in this area. Think of it as being on a first date, so we always want to put our best foot forward and then we'll show our quirks as they get to know us or the pets. So we try to make sure that they meet the animal and kind of build a relationship before we go into too much detail. So today we're going to go over some general adoption information, some information on greeting customers, the core values, directing them around the facility, handling donations. We're also going to go into how to sign adopters in using Shelter Love and Wait While, and then some activities that you're able to do at the front desk if it's slow, and then the quiz at the end. So we'll start with some general adoption information. So these are our shelter hours. We do have three different departments and they all have a little bit of different hours. So the adoptions department is open on weekdays, Monday through Friday, 12 to 7. And on Saturday and Sunday, we are open 10 to 5. The Pet Help Services Department is open on Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, and Saturday and Sunday, 10 to 5. And then our Community Animal Hospital is open Tuesday through Friday, 8 to 5, and on Saturdays, 8 to 1. They are completely closed on Sundays, and they only do scheduled surgeries on Mondays. Our adoption prices can change, just depends on if we're running a special or anything. So, but typically if we're doing a normal adoption prices, any kitten under the age of six months is $75. Cats over the age of six months are $50. Puppies under the age of six months or, do or dogs under 30 pounds would be $125. And adult large dogs are 50. So these are just the adoption fees. So with the adoption fees, it includes every animal's up to date on vaccines, they're microchipped and they're spayed or neutered. Now the additional fees apply on a case-to-case -case basis. There is a $20 rabies licensing fee that only applies to Duval residents if the animal is three months or older and has already had its rabies vaccine. Um, so if someone lives in Nassau County, they would not have to get this. Or if the animal is only two months old, it's not old enough for the rabies vaccine, so they also wouldn't have to get it. When it comes to leaving the facility, um, the cats all have to leave in a carrier. We sell cardboard carriers for $7.49 or we do sell plastic carriers in the boutique at varying prices. But if and all, all the cats must leave in the carriers, adopters are always welcome to bring their own if they have one from home and then they won't be charged this fee. And then all dogs must leave on a leash and collar. The prices do depend on size. All the leashes are similar pricing, but the collars, it depends on if they need a small, medium, or large. Adopters, again, are allowed to bring their own, but the collar must fit the dog properly for us to be able to let them leave. People could also bring a harness if they want the dog to leave on that, but we encourage leashes and collars just because then they can attach their rabies tag to it, things like that. The adoption process, are, um, when someone first walks in, if they're interested in adopting, they're always welcome to walk around the facility and find an animal that they're interested in. Once they find that pet, they let the front desk know the pet's name and then wait for a counselor. The counselor will go over any questions and information about the pet. The majority of the pets can go home the same day and the counselor will talk about their options. So it does just depend. Examples of dogs, that would, dogs or cats that wouldn't be able to go home the same day would be one that maybe isn't quite spayed or neutered yet. They're, on, they're waiting to get their surgery, one that is on stray hold because we do hold animals a week to allow owners a chance to come in and claim them. Um, but the counselors will go into detail with the people about that. The next step is greeting customers. So we always want to greet customers in a positive way. So when someone first walks in, we want to smile and greet them. We always want to thank everyone for coming and ask how we can help them. Even if someone just comes and walks around, we always want to make sure that they have a positive experience. So if someone walks in and they talk about surrendering or finding a stray animal, it's good to keep in mind that most individuals who surrender don't want to have to surrender their dog. They just feel like that is the only option. So we always want to handle it with a lot of respect and just kindness. We don't want to be judgmental or anything like that because we never know what the person's situation is. 
So what we do is we would walk them to the front door and show them where the pet help services department is. Um, if there is more than one person at the front desk, one person can actually walk them over there just to make sure they get over there okay. We never want to say that we can take an animal. We always want to allow pet services counselors to make that judgment based on the situation and the space currently available. We don't want to guarantee anything. Like I said, the um, pet health services counselors are trained to speak to people and kind of figure it out on a case-to-case -case basis. If someone talks about having a vet appointment, we want to do the same thing where we walk them to the door and point them in the direction of the veterinary services. The veterinary services does operate by appointment only, so that is important to keep in mind in case anyone calls about it or anything like that. If they ask where to look, it's good to just briefly explain the layout of the adoption area and tell them if they find anyone that they're interested in to come and let you know their name so a staff can introduce them. Um, so usually it's good to just explain the different dog kennels. Um, if anyone ever asks about the sweets, a lot of times the sweets are just for long timers or dogs that maybe don't show as well in the kennel. Um, of course, pointing them to the small dog or puppy room and then of course where the cats are. If someone asks specifically about puppies and kittens, you can definitely direct them to where they would be if we had any, but I always encourage everyone to browse the entire facility because we have had people before that come in and they wanted a puppy, but they end up leaving with an adult dog just because they make that connection. So we always wanna encourage people to take a look around the entire facility. So some of our frequently asked questions, the front desk is a place where people will come and ask a lot of questions about pets or JHS in general. It's one of the main entrances to the building. There will be a list of facts printed out at the front desk and it'll also be emailed to you after you take the quiz. If someone comes in and they're interested in donating, we have a few different um, protocols that we follow. So if they're donating pet related items such as food or toys or anything like that, we always want to thank them for thinking of us and for bringing us those donations because we do use so many donations and we couldn't do what we do without the community's help. If they haven't brought it in already, it's always good to offer to assist them carrying the items because sometimes they have a lot or it's heavy. The items shouldn't sit behind the front desk. There is a rolling cart in the closet behind the front desk. The sweet keys unlock the door. All physical donations should go in there just to be properly sorted throughout the shelter. When it comes to non-pet related items, we do accept a variety of non-animal related items. Um, so we a lot of times we'll take like paper towels or regular towels, sheets, things like that. Um, so we always want to make sure that we kind of assess what they're bringing in. If it is a large value item, sometimes people do want to donate a car or their house after they pass away, anything like that. We always want to thank them for thinking of us and ask if they mind if you go and get a staff member for them to talk to. And then you want to find the nearest staff member. If you don't see any counselors around or you can't find Amy, my number one suggestion would be to call upstairs. You can either call me. Um, which is Jasmine Umpleby, the extension is 4569. You can call Allie Plummer or Kelsey Gilson as well. We just wanna make sure that we can speak to them more one-on-one -on -one and understand exactly what they want to do and kind of get it all worked out. If someone wants to take donate a monetary amount, small amounts of cash can be put in the bank on the counter, but if they wanna donate a check, card, or large cash donations, they would need to be rung up by a staff member. So again, we just want to thank them for thinking of us and ask if they mind waiting while you go and find a staff member and then just find a staff member. Again, if there's no one around, you can always call upstairs to me, Allie, or Kelsey to come down and collect the donation as well. Um, but a staff member does have to physically handle the money. Next, we're going to go over signing adopters in. So steps to signing adopters in. The first thing we do is look up the animal to see if it's available to be seen. Um, so a lot of times it'll be directly on there if it's available, um, adoption pending, things like that. Um, but if you're ever unsure, you can always ask a staff member in the area. Um, that way they can look it up just to make sure we're not signing people in for an animal that isn't available. We then add the person and animal on wait while wait list. And then we try to tell them the approximate wait time and that they'll receive a text when we're ready to introduce them to the animal. Um, we'll go into further into the systems now. So in Shelter Love, you just type the animal's name in to find them. 
Um, so what you can inform the potential adopters about at the desk would be attributes listed if they're positive. So if they know basic commands, lived with cats, and that's what these arrows are indicating. Um, we usually will skip any information on being FIV positive or if they're jumpy or mouthy, um, things that could be taken negatively, just because we want the counselors to be able to go over that more in depth because sometimes people will jump to conclusions. An example would be for an FIV positive cat, they might automatically assume that it couldn't live with other cats, which isn't the case. So we want to make sure that we always um, wait and let the counselors talk to them more specifically about um, anything that could be taken in a bad way. And then by the time the animal is ready for adoption, like I said, they're all microchipped, spayed and neutered and up to date on vaccines. Um, we always allow the adoption counselors to discuss any of the memos. These are for internal use. They should never be read to a customer word for word, just because sometimes we'll type things in a specific way for us to understand. And as we explain it to an adopter, we wanna make sure that we break it down so they fully understand what we mean. We also want to um, wait to discuss any playgroup notes because again, if a dog got into a scuffle, it doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't like dogs. Um, sometimes it's a situational thing, so we always wanna let counselors discuss that. The heartworm disease status or anything not so positive. Heartworm disease, again, is something that we want to take the opportunity to educate adopters about, so we do wanna wait until a counselor is able to go more in depth with them and answer any questions that they might have. When it comes to wait while, this is the system we use to sign adopters in. It's the way the counselors are able to track who is next in line, who's um, how long everyone's been waiting. So um, when you go to sign someone in on wait while, you always want to make sure you're on the wait list and not the served list. So the wait list um, is where people who are signed in to meet with a counselor are. The served list is actually where the counselors assign themselves. So once they take a customer, the, they pick their own name so that way they can assign themselves to that customer and that customer will move from the wait list to the served list. If you are on the served list page and you try to sign someone in, it will sign them in on the served list and the counselors will not see it, which can cause the person to get skipped. So once you're on the wait list page, you wanna click the plus sign in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. It'll pull up a window and in that window, you're going to enter the customer's name their phone number, the service, which is if it's a dog day out, full adoption, um, things like that. And if it's a cat or a dog, and then you wanna type the animal's name. Now, if someone is already signed in for an animal that the customer is interested in, we will sign them in a second. So for example, if someone was signed in for Bambi and someone else came up interested in Bambi as well, we would sign the second person in line as Bambi too. As we're signing them in, we do want to notify them that there's another person on the list signed in for that same animal and that they're going to be able to make the decision first, but that we will let them know as soon as we make a decision. So as soon as that first person makes a decision on whether or not they're going to take the animal, we will go and find the second person to notify them. That way if they want to switch animals or if they want to come back another day, they're able to do so without waiting an extended period of time. So we always wanna click add and then wait a second to ensure their name appears on the bottom of the list. Once their name appears, they will receive a text message that says they are in line. When it is their turn, they will receive a second text message telling them, woohoo, it's your turn, um, and to return to the front desk within five minutes. One important thing to note is we never want to share any personal information with anyone. So if someone walks up um, an example would be if someone walks up and they ask about an animal they had seen last week and wondering where it had gone, we usually would just tell them, oh, that animal was adopted, things like that. We would never specifically tell them who adopted it, um, go into details with them about the adoption, anything like that. If you ever had a person coming up requesting this kind of personal information, you can always get a staff member and they'll be able to handle it. You don't have to feel like you have to specifically handle it, um, but we do never, we are always sure to never share personal information with members of the public. So next we're going to go into some of the activities that you're able to do at the front desk. So these are activities that you can do maybe while it's slow. Sometimes in the afternoon we do get little rushes, but every once in a while there will be time where you, we're kind of just sitting there waiting. So one main thing to do is answering phone calls. So there is a phone at the front desk that is the main line for adoptions. 
So we always want to just thank them for calling and ask how you may assist them. So an example of how you would um, greet someone when you answer the phone would be, thank you for calling the Jacksonville Humane Society. This is Adoptions. How may I help you? That way they can definitely, they know that they're already calling the Adoptions Department and then they know that you're willing to help them. You always want to listen to all they have to say before determining an action to take. If they mention scheduling an appointment for vet services, kindly offer to transfer them to the veterinary services department so that way they can be helped. So the hospital customer care extension is 4611. If they say they found a stray animal or need to surrender an animal, explain to them that our community resource center will help them and then ask them if they mind being transferred and then transfer them. The um, extension for that is 4584. All the extensions are also at the front desk on the phone list, so if you ever need to reference that, you're always more than welcome to. We also never want to guarantee we will take an animal, especially over the phone. We don't want someone driving here assuming that we will automatically take their animal and then we aren't able to due to space. That is the number one reason that we a lot of times aren't able to take animals is just space constraints. We are a... Um, we're not an open admission shelter, so we do everything by appointments or just based on space. Um, a lot of times they can also refer to ACPS as another option if they um, want to, but the Community Resource Center is someone will go over that with them and give them all of their options before doing determining what the action should be. Um, you can always refer to the fact sheet at the front desk for adoption-related inquiries as well. And then the way you transfer someone is with the person on the line, you're going to click the um, con conference transfer button and then type the extension number. Once it rings once, you can hang up and they'll be transferred to the other line. You always just want to make sure it rings once just to make sure it went through. Um, and then they should be transferred properly. Another thing you could do is entering personality profiles. So when a dog comes back from an off-site activity, such as a dog day out, a sleepover, or a promoted pet, we do ask them all to fill out a personality profile. So there are clipboards at the front with this profile, um, blank profiles for them to fill out. So in order to enter this into Shelter Love, you would do the following. Search the animal by the name. Once you find the animal and open that animal's page, you would click on the Memos tab. Select behavior as the type of memo from the drop down menu. You just want to type the personality profile word for word, then click post to submit the memo, and then you can throw the personality profile in the trash um, or recycle it. Um, we do, if you ever have any questions about what to type exactly, always ask a staff member before throwing it away, but just type everything word for word. That way we can kind of interpret what they meant. Um, another option is putting donations in the bin or closet. Like I said earlier, they should always be put in the closet as soon as possible. But every once in a while, if someone does bring a lot of donations and it's busy, it will get stuck behind the front desk. But we do want to move it as soon as possible. So we can use a sweet key in the top right drawer of the front desk. We're going to pull the bin out from the closet and put all the donations in it. And then we just put the bin back in the closet. You are also able to serve Dogs Day Out patrons, but only if you are trained to dog walk. If you're interested in becoming a dog walker, if you're not already, you can always email me at volunteer at jackshumane.org. Um, so that way we can get you signed up to do so. So the first thing you're going to do is have the patron take a picture of the currently approved Dogs Day Out list, which is taped to the counter of the reception desk. Um, not every dog is eligible for a Dogs Day Out program. Our behavior staff picks them individually based on who they think needs a break from the shelter and who they think will be best out of the shelter. Um, so then the person is going to be able to walk around and choose which dog they'd like to take out based on that list. What we do next is sign them in onto the wait list and the serve type will be dog day out. If you have time and there's no one in line, you can retrieve a dog's day out agreement from the bottom left built-in cabinet drawer and put it on a clipboard and ask the patron to review and fill out the form. You will pull out a bag from the bottom gray drawer. We just recently got backpacks um, that should have all the supplies in them. So when you open that bottom gray filing cabinet drawer, they should all be in there and filled and ready to go. Um, you do want to just double check though, just in case um, something got missed. So just ensuring there's a list of places to go. Dog toys, a small bag of treats, 
a collapsible water bowl, and a bottle of water. Um, if something is missing from this, you can grab another bag and then just leave the one that is missing something out and tell a staff member so that way we can ensure that it gets refilled. We do want to ask the patron if they have any kinds of questions, tell them what's in the bag, and then ask them to come back before the um, end of business. So we want to just make sure that they um, know. We usually suggest people come an hour before close just to ensure that every they have we have time to get the dog settled and back in their kennel, um, and it gives a little bit of wiggle room in case there's traffic. So um, you can go and get the dog and put an Adopt Me vest on them and then use an Adopt Me leash to get them out. Walk the dog and person out to the fountain and send them on their way to enjoy their day. Um, so like I said, they should come back about an hour before close just to ensure they have time to get everything checked back in. Um, but if they do have questions that maybe you don't feel comfortable answer answering, you can always refer to a staff member as well. So finally, we're going to take the quiz. So the following questions should just be answered using your best judgment. Not all of them are actually directly to related anything we went over today. And then you will receive an email response to discuss the opportunity further and just go over all the answers. Um, so you don't have to type out the answers. An example would be you just have to put for number one, I choose C or anything like that. Um, so that way we can check your answers and then reach out to you to discuss them. So I'm going to leave about 10 seconds on each slide. Um, if you guys need, you probably will need more time to read the questions and everything. Just go ahead and pause the video, read the questions. If you have any trouble with the quiz, you can always email volunteer at jackshumane.org. But thank you so much for watching this video. I wish everyone luck on the quiz. We hope to see lots of you interested in doing the front desk. Um, it's always awesome to see the animals getting adopted and going home and really talking them up to adopters. But if you have any other questions, you can definitely reach out.